hello anybody who start, watches later uh we're streaming a little a bit late we already started uh discussing the loot and the xp gained from the last week's episode and we're just discussing some of these items all right uh you said that it shouldn't affect it yeah Uh, that, those are I have the, I have the cross bladed rager which allows me to do the to merge the two bloodlines, um, and that's what gives me the power to do the blur, the power to do the haste, uh, gives me my claws and my um, my uh, all those features uh, where I get, get larger. Those are all bloodline powers. It would it would basically give me the next set of abilities that I would get from my bloodline. And I I'm hearing I'm hearing myself a little bit come back, but uh you said I'm breaking up. Um I don't know how to fix that. Okay, I can hear you guys talking. Somebody's watching Twitch and doesn't have it muted, I think. Okay, uh, it might have been me. Um, actually, I think I might have the recording not working properly hmm. anyway go ahead so it won't work for my bloodline power so it won't really affect it's not going to benefit me <clears throat> I, do, I don't know if Go would know that but I assume Veda probably would if she knew what the item was so the talisman of ultimate evil is a minor artifact So the talisman of ultimate. I'm gonna have to read about that, but I don't think artifact. I can wear it because I'm good aligned. But yes, that is a minor artifact. Pretty sweet. All right, I'm done reading. Um, I could technically, I can technically carry it. Um, I don't. I don't think that I need to. Well, we'll just put it in the extra dimensional space, and it shouldn't affect us. Yeah, you can't even pick it up, though. You would know that, I'm assuming. Uh, oh, good, good aligned, uh, yeah, good aligned creatures can't <coughs> touch it. Say it again. Good aligned creatures can't touch it without taking damage. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Um... Actually, if the target is good aligned, a flaming fissure opens under it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what about neutral aligned? I'm new. I'm neutral. Um, oh no! A good a good creature takes eight d six necrotic damage upon touching. Yeah, per per round of contact. <laughs> yeah. I must keep carrying this. So I'm 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 guessing Go would be Go would be a, a person you could tell to pick it up, but um, there really um, is no value associated with this. So I think maybe we should. Uh, Keep it inside an extra dimensional space, store it inside of an extra dimensional space, and um, yeah, lock it away where uh, where nobody can get it until we get back to Pathfinders. 
you know the easiest way to destroy this thing, right? Use the last two charges. I don't know any good. I don't. I don't know any good aligned clerics other than me. If I used it, it would create a fissure under me. Like, <laughs> I would like. Yeah, I would die permanently, and then like the death is permanent. Like you can't get it back. So no, that's okay. I think we should return it to uh, the Pathfinders. They seem trustworthy. Okay. Um, all right. I am done. Um, putting everything into the group gold, and uh, I think we should all just kind of uh, go over to that aisle or to that hallway where we didn't oh, go down. No, I could I could use this. I could use it. Are you neutral? Yeah. I. It doesn't say anything about it. Does anything yes. to an evil divine spellcaster who possesses this item. <laughs> Are you an evil divine spellcaster? No. No. Uh, it, it's you, a... You're neutral and you cast arcane spells. Actually, it requires attunement by creature of evil alignment, so I can't use yeah. it. Um, but anybody could technically use it that was a, 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 attuned to it. It doesn't say that you have to be evil aligned to use it. <clears throat> um, do you guys want to teleport over anyway. to the edge of that hallway that we just briefly looked down and or saw just a glimpse of and look down it and see uh, see what's down there? Which one is I that? I can't remember which one it was. It is, uh, I don't think I can do a shift click. No. It was, it's over by the sundial looking thing where everybody got oh, yeah. apart. Uh, there's still a door that's in this section that where we're at. Oh, really? Yeah. The door and the door. Oh, yeah, that one. I said we check that one out. South of where the elementals were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the elementals are back, though. You already told us that, right? Yeah, I'm going to um, stealthfully. Let me uh, let me roll my my stealth. Um. Uh, but the elementals didn't care about us as long as we didn't go into the middle of the room. Yeah, we kind of stole the body and and brought it back. I yeah. kind of stole the body and brought it back. So anyway, anyway, I'm gonna teleport if I may um, over here and uh, stealthily look around the corner and uh, <clears throat> see if they look agitated or see if they're still there. Okay, I'll go ahead and give you a description of the room since it's been a little while. Um, okay. <clears throat> just to get everybody up to speed on what exactly is in here. Oh man, there's carpets in here. Um, yeah. Alright. Uh, this 30 foot uh, high chamber is made with dark green marble. Uh, four black pillars, each bearing one of the four mud sorcerer symbols. Stand on either uh, side of the hall of a uh, waterway. The eastern half of this chamber has a dome ceiling above a 10 foot square pool of clean water. Uh, an iron door is set in the center of the east wall. And so, you know, there's only like a foot or so, uh, you know, above the water uh, to, you know, kind of where you can kind of fit down that hallway. You kind of peek your head down uh, and kind of peek out there. You don't really see much. You see just like some water, um, you know, and yeah, and that's about it. You don't hear much of anything. Um, okay, I'm going to teleport back, and I'm going to say uh, I totally forgot there was only like uh, like a foot of space above the water. Um, I didn't really see much of anything. Yeah, I'm hearing myself again, and yeah. it looks like Deluxe Minimal's microphone is going off while I'm talking. Oh, is this uh, probably me then? I will speak in a regular voice. Okay. Um, well, let me put on my headphones then. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I use my headphones. I don't even have speakers anymore, anyways. But you want some speakers? I do. I'm gonna have some speakers one of these days. I got some extra speakers sitting over here. They're great speakers. Oh well, yeah. I totally didn't rip them off my employer and sell them to you out of the back of a van. I don't get that from a man, uh, from your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's that? Is that better? Mom, 
He wants more mashed potatoes. <laughs> is that still, it's still? It looks like it's still doing it, though, no? Hang, hang on. Hello, can you hear what I'm saying? What, what about now? This is my regular speaking voice. I sound like this all the time. It's gone. It was you, Brian. It was me? Yeah, uh, I don't hear any, any feedback. Um, so I'm going to say, yeah, I totally forgot. There's only like a foot of water or a foot space above the water. I peeked through there. I did not see any elementals. I didn't see, um, didn't actually see anything going on. And I will recount the black pillars with the four mud sorcerer um, emblems on there. And there is, in fact, a steel door on the westerly or the easternly facing uh, wall. And um, I didn't check for traps because uh, I was too excited to come back and tell you. Good to know everybody's paying attention. I'm going to teleport back and I'm going to uh, make a perception check for traps that are overt. Okay, where uh, where, are you, where exactly are you searching for traps? Right there, yep. You're searching for traps on that spot. Oh, no. Um, I was just looking at the door from over in this area, like to see if there was, you know, if I could see anything. Um, yeah, I mean, if I, if I can see anything from this spot, then I can. If I can't, then I can. I mean, yeah, you're going to have to. Uh, I think you're going to have to get closer. Let's just look at the rules. Pathfinder searching for traps. Proximity. Um, How'd Kathy's move go today, Joe? Uh, it, it went up fine. Uh, but the movers did a really good job getting her mm -hmm. stuff into the van. I was going down her back steps and uh, went around the corner and uh, sprained my ankle really, oh. really bad. Like probably the worst sprain I've ever had in my whole life. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'm like looking around. It's really sore. Mm, it sucks. My lat right here on my left hand side um yeah i sat down here and did some stuff uh, some dna or some pathfinder stuff last night and watched some youtube videos on uh, some base youtube videos when i got up my my i could barely even move my arm and this morning my lat hurt so bad i think i pulled something uh, lifting all those uh things yesterday but i got into the pool and uh and we swam around a little bit and everybody had a great time, and now it feels a lot better. So, cool. <clears throat> let's get in. Yeah, we're gonna say you're gonna need to be up, like, you know, between five and ten feet away from the door. Um, I mean, you're, I mean, you're like thirty feet away. <laughs> uh -huh. How are you gonna spot anything when you're thirty-five feet away? You know. Uh... Yeah, I'm twenty feet away from my dry lube. And I can barely read it. Yeah, my thought is you, you're going to want to be like five or so feet away. You know? Yeah, that pool down there looks menacing to me. And with these water elementals hanging a boot, I think she's too smart to go uh, to go any farther. So she says, um, there's a menacing looking pool. I know there's water elementals a boot. Um, let's, uh, let's all teleport in there and uh, jack this guy. Okay. And I'm going to cast shield on myself. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, ring of protection plus three. I don't think there's an attunement period. Okay. Which should take me up to 22 for now. I don't think I'm going to keep it forever, but I'm going to use it while I got it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you had a, a deflection bonus before. Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. And uh, she says, who's with me? I'll go. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> she says, "Okay, Neville. Um, I'll be back in a flash, and um, I'm I'm going to move like right like five feet away from the wall, and then I'm going to put the three and one, two, and three. Uh huh." And then, um, if nothing happens right away, then uh, 12 seconds later, I'm going to um, teleport back and get Neville and teleport him back. 
Andy says, oh, why don't you let me go um, search the door for traps? Okay, go ahead. I'm going to check it out from here. Okay. I'm going to approach, and my trap sense should trigger if I do approach a trap. And I will search. Okay. Yeah, so your trap sense goes off even kind of before you get to the door. Mm -hmm. uh, you're pretty sure that there's a uh, a trap involved with the door. Okay. Um, push 28, what, what kind of trap is it? Uh, yeah, so uh, there is a magical trap. Uh, you believe it to be a uh, cone of cold trap. You'll need to use your uh, magical trap uh, disable uh, ability to yeah. you know, knock it out. All right. You guys... Um... If I fail this, you fire me as a rogue. Uh, okay, I'm going to wait in for. this corner. She says, uh, Veda will go into the details of uh, how a cone spell works, and if we stay far enough on either side of the trap, we should uh, we should, uh, we should should be outside the emanation zone. Wait, what is it? I, I missed what... A, there's a cone of cold trap on this door that Andoria is disabling. Um... And uh, Veda was just telling everybody, if you stay over to the right and to the left of the door... Oh, um, uh, I can use a little bit of cooling. I'm actually well, kind of... The only thing I can think is we have the Dispel Magic now, if we want to use that, or we can just let Andy do it there, too. Well, oh, that's what a rogue's for. Our yeah. disabled device is, like, plus 35 or something. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's okay. we don't kill us. All right, here goes nothing. Disable device, go. All right, yeah, 48, uh, yeah. Damn. You, um, you know, methodical, methodically, uh, you know, just disable the, the magic trap using, you know, the yeah, the resources at your disposal. So, best I, description I, ever. I can't go into more detail than that because you know, <laughs> how does really magic know. work and nobody know. I don't even think she knows exactly how she does it, but <laughs> but uh, yeah. So yeah, the, your door is safe to open. She uh, she uses her kitty cat claws and scratches it out. Yeah, it's like a, a I was gonna say like a uh, like one of those uh, lottery tickets, like a lottery ticket, like. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. The, who wants to open the door? I know a guy. Hang on. Oh, do you want to, well, wait. Do you want to use your little um, thing where you can see through the door? Or do you not have I, that equipped anymore? Um, I don't think that works in this um, oh, yeah. dungeon. <clears throat> Forgot about that. Good thinking, Dan. Real good thinking. <laughs> Oh, that was a meta DM move. <laughs> Go walks over to the door. I, mean, I should actually have all of his hit points back by now. Oh, yeah, I'm down hit to points, too. Shoot, I'm going to go ahead and um, use some channels. Go ahead, fast healing on him, and uh, he has his hit point per round. Don't you have a ring of regeneration? Yeah, I have that, too. But he had fast healing on him from... Jack's nice. healing too. There's way on hands. And uh, that's twenty. Oh, and just so you know, the group. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the 150 hit points of damage that Go would have taken earlier actually would have knocked him unconscious. I went back and looked at the rules of uh, how damage reduction works, uh, specifically to the Blood Ranger, and it uh, it doesn't look like um, that would have worked for him. So. Oh. Just it, so. It it, it oh. doesn't it doesn't stop magic damage basically. I'm sorry. You're you breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up really bad. Like every time you talk. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to do about it. I... Um, I don't know. You want to restart your machine and try. Touch your it. modem, in the places it likes. Yeah. Or just sweet talk it. Give it a little. Ah. Yeah. yeah talky little... talky. Touch it in the spots that it likes. Yeah. It's, it's got lights. Uh, it's got warning lights. Uh, It'll tell you when you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna try <laughs> plugging in my headset first. Right. No, it's, it's battery. A, uh, it's internet connection. You're like freezing and stuff too. Yeah. I don't know if you have to reset your modem and everything, or if you have to do the hokey pokey, turn yourself about. Mm hmm. That's usually what it's all about. <laughs> I, 
often. No, oh, he's back. I um, I use three channel energies. I still got a few of them left, and um, I'm back up to full hit points. Sorry, uh, channel energies. Yeah, I'm a cleric. I can channel energy on myself. Oh, right, I forgot. You're a mystic clergy, and you yeah. have the, <laughs> the yeah. You know, I was reading about Mystic Thurge online, and like nobody likes them. It's like it's a really underpowered class, and I'm like, like what? Under like, how would you make this more? I mean, like the the only real thing that you get, like the bonus that you get, is spell synergy, where you can you can cast wizard and cleric spells, and wizard or cleric or you could cast like a wizard spell in a cleric spot, or a cleric spell in a wizard spot. But it's the cost is too much to do it, so I don't ever do it. Uh, but it's like you know, you're just, you're basically taking two classes at the same time and getting, like, all the spells. Like, yeah. all of them. I, I, I take, having a dip into three, you know, three different class levels to kind of... That's the biggest. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge sort of, you know... Luckily, we got magic items to take care of the rest. All right. I'm going to try to open the door. All right. <clears throat> uh, go open the door. First door you guys have opened in a little while. And you see... I punch it in the face. <laughs> a small 20 by 10 uh, foot hallway that appears to end abruptly. That doesn't Andy look says, right. Yeah, yeah. This looks like uh, something for me to check out. Um, there may be more traps, Veda. Let me proceed. Yeah, oh, I'm not going in. I'm not going in, dog. I mean, kitty cat. <laughs> All right, just be careful. All right, so she's going and perceiving for hidden um, traps and and um, doors. Another crap roll. But I should get an automatic, um, you know, perception check if I do run into the traps. So I didn't see anything. Um. Uh. You no. Know, you know, you know, not. I mean, you didn't even make a. So I mean, I'll tell you if your trap sense goes off. Uh, uh, okay. So I did. I just made a pass down the hall, and I had a crappy twenty-one. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I was down here. Got it. Beta so, uh, sees Andaria come back out, and she's like, "There's no bed or anything. I don't. Uh, I don't understand what was in there." I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. I'm looking hard enough. You uh, you didn't see any traps, so she she says not in this dungeon, and she'll uh, she'll go through and uh, and take a look. There we go. That's more like it. And she'll uh, detect magic the whole way. Uh, yeah, you don't uh, I'm, I'm gonna message Amber. She's getting, uh, she's a little late getting home. I want, just want to check on her. Okay. So, go ahead. And, um, boy, I really need to pick up the spell to detect secret doors. But, uh, 41 for, uh, I went inside and walked all the way down and, uh, and around. Uh, no. It doesn't look like there's any secret doors in here. Mm -hmm. No magical presence. And no magical presence. Hmm. I'm That's sorry. Uh, bah, 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 bah. You do notice on the back of the door, uh, there is a uh, the mud sorcerer. So the first mud sorcerer symbols on the door. Weird. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, puzzle. That was the symbol of the convergence between water and dirt. Or water and earth. Uh, have a good look. Um, the first one I haven't, I haven't memorized. So. I the beta says that we yeah. should oh, all go in the room and shut the door. Yeah. Okay. That works. I I think it. I think we're supposed to make it wet. Okay. Um, she can. Uh, she can do that. Hang on. Make, make the room wet? Uh, well, 
the, the symbol was the convergence and... between water and dirt, or water and earth. I think we should get the floor wet. That would What's be... the floor look like? It looks like everything else. Like the like stone stone is, is it tile, stone? Uh, it's the same, like, like you know, mud-colored uh, stone tile that you've seen throughout the rest of the, the mm -hmm. dungeon um, tomb. Um, uh, okay. Oh, it's a cleric, uh, it's a cleric, or, or, not Orison. Are they Orisons? I can't remember now. Yeah, Orison. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast Create Water. Um, I'm going to not stand in the doorway. I'm going to stand over here. Okay. And I will put that spell in chat, although I think it is in my spell book already if I need to get it there. And then I will just try to create the maximum amount of water, which I'm level 9 now, so 18 gallons of water I will create on the floor. Okay. Uh, yeah, you make this water appear, uh, and it just kind of puddles up and kind of starts puddling over. And uh, you know, completely um, covers the room, uh, the ten by ten foot room, with a thin layer of water, uh, which eventually starts puddling out towards you. Uh, nothing happened so far. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna shut the door. Okay. Uh, go say, why don't you shut me in the room? Get on in there, boy. All right. So shut the door. Now you go, open the door. Go's gonna go yeah. into the room. Okay. Now you open the door, you go in. Well, uh, before I open the door, I'm going to check it for traps again, because okay. a lot of times in this dungeon, like, you think you did something, and then, like, you got rid of a wall of force, and then all of a sudden, there's another wall of force. So I'm going to check it for traps again before I uh, before I open it. Looking specifically for a cone of cold. Uh, you can't find magical traps, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll say, Andoria, do you see any magical traps on this door? I know you just disabled one. Um, I, she, I guess, goes up and perceives again. All right, nope, you don't notice anything. So we shut the door, um, opening the gobles inside with the water. Um and um, okay, and I'll go in and then you shut the door again behind me. Yep, shut the door and uh, then we check it for traps and then open it up and see if Gobel's still there. So when I'm in there and they shut the door, does anything happen? Okay, uh, you shut the door. You're standing in a puddle of water. Um, let me get this door kind of like there. Okay, does that look okay? Uh mm huh. -hmm. Closer. Um, uh, yeah, you shut the door. Nothing happened so far. Um, gonna make a perception check. Me? Yeah. Uh, come on. This character sheet's so slow. Yeah, you don't notice any changes in the pressure of the room. You don't notice any odorable, you know, like odor or any kind of smells. Uh, you don't hear anything. Uh, you know, yeah, as far as you can tell, you're just kind of locked in the, you're in the closet. All right, I'll knock on it. Let me back out. Okay, as you touch the door, <laughs> yes. you teleport uh, over... Another nice. room. This is some legend of Zelda shit. Alright. So, how long were we going to give him before um, we open the door to check on him? Um, Veda will say that um, if there is any, uh, any effect, it probably has an instantaneous 
uh, casting time. Uh, most permanent spells are uh, are cast in- instantaneously. Um, so it, if he's there, he's he'll be there. So which he um, will be because it looks so like a clock. Uh, if I look around, do I see anything in this new room? Uh, make a perception check. That's like down the stairs, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do notice a uh, secret door. You are standing in front of a secret door. Um, I guess what happens is, yeah, you're teleported, you know, you kind of, as you touch the door, you kind of see like a flash and kind of like a, you know, um, like a phase effect where everything kind of goes hazy for a second. And then you notice yourself in a kind of a similar room, but you're, uh, you know, you're, front, you're standing in front of a secret door, basically. All right. And the door is definitely different. It doesn't have uh, any uh, symbols on it or anything. So. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to open the door. Okay. Uh, you didn't notice any traps on it with your perception check. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I assumed then... that I wouldn't see them anyway. Yeah, and... you can open the door uh, uh, just fine. And, and then what, um... I'm going to come up here, and I think that I would recognize this area once I got up here. Uh, yes, you would. You do. You, you see and it. If that's yeah. the case, that I know if I just run down here to the thing and touch it. Mm-hmm. And I try yeah. to touch it to see if it teleports me back to where I was before. Yeah, that'll teleport you back to the um, the water pool over over here. I can send you over if you don't right. want. Um, I don't remember. Was can we crawl through this, or did we have to walk? Th- uh, did we have to go around? You had to go around. Uh, and, and there's a wall of force in the way. <laughs> so I I come up to the wall of force like, ah, oh, damn it. And I try to yell as loud as I can. They're not too far away from me now. Um, I don't know if the wall of force... I don't think the wall of force uh, prevents sounds from leaving. I don't think so. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, everybody in the other room, go ahead and make a uh, perception check. I don't know what you guys have been doing. Wow. Oh, kinda... if the wall of force would block it, then I would come over here and I could yell through the little keyhole. Yeah, that is true. Um, That's actually closer anyway. Wall of force. Does the wall of force block sound? Uh... I, I, I would, I probably, if I even thought that it might be possible, I'd just come over here and yell through this anyway. I'm gonna say I don't know. It says that there's no rules around it. It doesn't matter if you go over by the yeah by the the, the face and and yell through the um, the little gap there. You're probably better off anyway. And Since I'm you're gonna, a bit closer. And I'll yell. I by the wall of force. And then I'll come over <laughs> here by the wall of force. <laughs> as soon as you tell it, I'm gonna yell. You cut right out. So uh... which for the first time since you've been back. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Perfectly what are you going to get on? I'm at the wall of force. Okay. Uh, everybody make a perception check. I got a 47. Yeah, so you can... Wow, you got a 20. Uh, yeah, you, so yeah, Aveda definitely uh, kind of faintly hears uh, go and shouting uh, from the other room. I'm at the wall of force. Um, uh, oh. You're even able to make it out. Like, you know, kind of have go. I don't know how go sounds. It sounds... Um, can you, is, have we broken the t- telepathic bond? And it's like, that, how did you get there? The no, telepathic it, bond's only 30 feet. The, although I would know that he was gone as soon as uh, he was teleported because it's, uh, it doesn't reach more than 30 feet. So, yeah. No, the telepathic bond will last for the rest of the day. Um, so I know he's at the Wall of Force, and uh, I say, everybody, everybody join hands. <laughs> Where, where are we going? Are we going in here? We're going or... to the Wall of Force. Uh, okay. Are we going to go in the door? Or are we going to fight the water elementals again? She says, uh, oh, you didn't hear uh, you didn't hear Gobel yelling he's at the Wall of Force? Um, okay, well, what do you think? There's like some sort of magic, uh, magical teleportation device in there? Mm. She says... Uh, it seems uh, with her extensive training in the conjuration school, uh, specifically the subtype of uh, teleportation, she is. She says almost certainly. You think we should use it? You think it's safe? 
Um, I don't think anything in this in this uh, layer layer dungeon. What do we call what? What is an adventurer call this? In this in these ruins, I don't think anything in these ruins are safe, except for me. And she reaches out to take her hand. Okay, let's do it. And then I'm gonna boop everybody uh, over to uh, what I would assume is the uh, what what I know to be as the wrong side of the um, wrong side of the wall of force, which is right here. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. And go be like, come on! I you know that I wouldn't have yelled for you if I could have gotten through the wall of force and I was on that side, right? Hmm. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna let May in. Do a bit. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can hear me or not. When yeah, I we don't know. So, uh, anyway, I'll just um, I, I won't teleport everybody. I'll just come back over here and I'll say, um, so what's the dilly yo? Oh, that room teleported me uh, once I touched the back of the door when it was closed, back to where we had originally... Um, just the the hallway with the stairs just north of where we uh, got teleported to this section of the dungeon. Oh, okay. I pull out my uh, Pathfinder map, that uh, our magical Pathfinder map, and I open it up to reveal uh, to reveal all the areas that we've explored, and I say, over here in this area? Yes. Awesome. Say, so, okay, well, let's catch up with the others and uh, we'll figure out what to do next. And I am going to teleport Gobel, if he's willing, to uh, the other side of the Wall of Force. Cool. Okay, should we wait and for... Then, uh, then I, I explain the process to the, uh, the rest of the group. Okay. And uh, pull out the Pathfinder map. I've been wanting to use that for something. So. And, uh, yeah, it's also about the Pathfinder map again. What was that again? Was you it? gave us the Pathfinder map, uh, the the very first, um, the very first time that Veda, that that dungeon where Veda was uh, came into being when Daedalus left to go check on uh, Forn because he was like selling all the artifacts and stuff because he turned into a monk. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had uh, that mission. We had got a map from the Pathfinder. So, oh, here I actually have a magic item of the of the thing. Let me. Uh, I'll see if it works. Oh, a link? You have a link? Uh, uh, yeah, it's basically you unfurl the map and it shows you uh, the area that and the um, and the dungeon or wherever that you are. Um, areas that you explored reveal themselves on the map, and then um, you can always you always know where you are on the map. That's something that you gave the group before, uh, just before Veda came into uh, the group when Daedalus was around. Uh, awesome. Yeah. I don't remember that, but I probably did do that because that sounds kind of fun. So. It's a, it was a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a year ago. Maybe, Maybe a year um, ago, yeah. Th does it only show the information that we know? Like, it doesn't show the actual positions of this section of the of these ruins as opposed to the other section? It just shows that those two areas exist? I don't. I don't know. That would be cool though if, if you know, like we open the door and Gobel is not there anymore. Like we open the Pathfinder map and like, oh, there's Gobel. He's right there, just off the map of that area that we didn't fully explore. Uh, either way, I described the area, yeah, so it I mean, should show up on the map. It's not going to give you information that you wouldn't already kind of have. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's it's not going to give you a supernatural way to know where he is and to know. You know, you guys. I think the bonus of this is so that we don't have to draw uh, a map. You know, what? So. What? Did, what? You? He's talking to Kathy. I think. Oh. I'm gonna run up and get a beer while uh, he's finishing up. I'll be right back. Oh. So I will describe the uh, the situation, like that area, so that hopefully, it, so that it'll show up on the map. And. Yeah. Okay. With an air, with a line that links it to the entryway, with an arrow pointing one direction. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Or like, it's, I, I, I just imagine like the the map has like this uh, 
Zoom, zoom, zoom properly. Uh, that's weird. What's that? So, so basically, effectively, it, it, like whoever has the map, anyone around them just automatically adds whatever they know to the map kind of thing. Yeah, I guess that's the idea I had. <laughs> well, that's fine. It's tuned to then, then the rules. Definitely, it's attuned to us for. And whenever we're within like five or ten feet of it, it just puts down. What we're doing. And that's a simple rule. And then we actually have an explanation. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Joe, did you need more time? Uh... Or... No, no, Kathy got me a nice pack uh, for my foot because she loves me. Oh, she's good for you. <laughs> good. All right, so there's a big red line going from there to there. All right. Everybody knows. Ooh, nice. Is that the line of death? If you see the line anywhere, you die. Wow, that's a big line. <laughs> oh, you you put that line there. I thought somebody was just I, messed up. I did not. I thought I think Josh did. I did. Yes, that looks like a Josh arrow. <laughs> All right, what do you uh, what do you guys want to do next? She says, uh, Veda says, um, I think we should go up and we should um, check out uh, that that hallway, the last hallway that we haven't done anything with. I feel pretty confident we've explored this section. We still haven't figured out what's up with these heads. The heads? Yeah. The heads oh, in that room? I like the one just north of us right now. So, um, what's down here again? Actually, Go is going to go up and off. go look at that head and inspect it because he just remembered this head was here and we never figured out like the other ones we figured out were either secret passages or ways to look through areas and he's like we don't know what this head here is for We've yes we do if it. you open the jaw it reduces it takes away the wall of force and we'll all get flooded and die or it's the drain oh um, that's that the drain was, yeah that was this guy here right and yeah like uh, Veda mentioned, you know, uh, whenever that one ball of force kind of dropped, uh, a whole bunch of water slammed you guys against the wall, and had there not been a drain there, uh, the whole hallway would have you know, flooded. I remember now. Or potentially died. So, Wait, did we did we want to see what was inside that room with the water? I don't think we're interested in dying. I can just go into water. I don't have to worry about dying. Hmm. Water. Well, what if there's lava in there? Remember, it changed colors. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't like a murky, swirly thing anymore. It changed colors, and it was completely opaque. Gobel yeah, goes yeah. and looks at it. Well, what? What if it's like water? What if this is like earth that comes down and crushes you? Um, and then what if the next right? thing's a treasure? What if it goes water, earth, and treasure? Okay, uh, let's see if we can cast fly on ourselves, and I will disintegrate this wall of treasure. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you guys, you want to put uh, fly in your? Uh... Well, no, I. Go, I was actually joking with the group. Um, Go goes and is he's looking at it again. What does it look like? Um, it, yeah, it looks like so. It looks like a wall of glass, but it's like black, perfectly black, you know, opaque glass. So, Gobble's like, can't you just like teleport me through it? Um, well, uh, I have to go in there too, and I'm not going in there. Oh, and if there is something in there, uh, we're going to take uh, a lot of damage on the way back out. And I'm not really good with a lot of damage. Oh, you I know guys, you have some scars. You guys go, or everybody but me goes to the other side of the Wall of Force. Everybody but me and Veda. And then we, Veda, you help me get rid of the wall, and then you teleport yourself quickly through the Wall of Force. And me and you, you can teleport us both through the Wall of Force. If there's, mm -hmm. if it's an issue. Well, why don't I just um, 
destroy the wall of force with everybody else on the other side of the good wall of force. We'll call it wall of force good. And then as a swift action, I'll just teleport back around. And then we'll see no, if anything a, comes there, creeping around there, the corner. There's, a, there's like, a wall of force and a wall of glass. I'm talking about destroying the wall of glass. Oh, the wall of the wall of glass looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll destroy the wall of glass and then uh, teleport back to the wall of force, and we'll see if like uh, fifty skeleton hellhounds come out and uh, and see what it is. That's you know. So, sounds like no a solid deal. idea. I'm gonna go close this door first. He closes this door. Okay. And uh, she says, well, if you want to do that, do you want to open the drain, too, or close the drain, too? I will open it. I'll leave the drain open. If, if okay. it is water again, that way it'll drain out. I mean, I'm going to start teleporting people to the other side of uh, the wall of horror. I don't know if this is a horrible idea or not, but it's going to be fun. Ellie! Are you upstairs exploring? Okay, and um, so the wall of force is not destroyed. It's still there. And uh, as long as everybody stays still and doesn't move, um, I'll use my... Um, uh, l let, me, uh, let me make sure I know what it is. Uh, my uh, Hekirupu of obliteration and disintegrate the glass... Try Attempt to disintegrate the glass from this angle and then as a swift action, teleport to the other side of the wall of force. Okay, so you're going to disintegrate it. Are you going to, like, spend any time looking at what comes out? Or are you going to... What are you going to do? I don't want to... Um, well, I, I, I don't know if it takes the full... Like, I don't know if I can, like, disintegrate it <clears throat> and see what's on the other side of it and then, as a swift action, like, in my, in my one turn, do that. Um, can I disintegrate so it? Make a perception check, and then as a swift action, teleport back. Well, yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, as a standard action, you could disintegrate the the glass wall. As a move action, you could just look at what it is, and then as a swift action, teleport. Okay, that's what I want to do. Okay. okay. Actually, um, I can. No, I feel. I feel. Ugh. Yeah, I don't feel super, super comfortable right exactly here, but this is where I'm going to do it. Okay. So you disintegrate the the opaque wall, or op opaque uh, thing there. Can I do that? There you go. And you briefly see... Uh, what looks like a moved wall that came in from the end. And mm. then, then you, as a swift action, teleport back over here. So. Gotcha. And I will count that against my daily limit. Okay. Okay. And she says it looks uh, to appear to it looks to be uh, one of those moving wall traps. So if we go in there, the, uh, there's a wall of force that would have prevented us from getting out, and then we would have been crushed by by the moving wall. And if you this, and you also realize that it, had you been on that side of the wall when the the, the the wall of glass appeared again, you could have possibly been crushed. You know, had that had that happened. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, I uh, I recount that so, tale. So uh, us experimenting with that gave us information. Good. All mm -hmm. right. Knowledge is power. Okay. Um, I say we uh, so, do a little. Yeah. Uh, there's still some areas up here we haven't checked out. Yep. I yeah. Think, that's where. We, yep. That's where I we want to we go. Just, go we, and check out what we, these like square things are. We are, we were just finishing up what was down here the area down here that we were in first. Mm -hmm. If you guys want before we go do the hallway, we can uh, teleport over to the uh, pillars and see if there's any additional writing like there was in the elephant room. And what what sort of things are you talking about? Talking the about? where you your where your arrow is pointing? I yeah. th where they have covered in heads? I don't remember. Where my arrow is pointing. Yeah, you have an arrow pointing down. Yeah, that one is the teleport into this place, and uh -huh. that that was just some columns. 
that the hat. Oh, was I thought you said something. What were you saying about the heads? You wanted to investigate the heads. Donovan. What? That You're was you. you. You said that. I didn't say anything about heads. You said something about yeah. squares, Donovan. Oh, there's th these things up here, uh, next to the long hallway full of pillars. Long hallway full of pillars. These. Oh. Yeah, you guys don't actually know what that is. These things. I know what that is. I know what that is. Yes. Yeah, we know what that uh, is. We filled them. We started filling them up with water. What? What? Th these were pits that we started filling up with no, water. No, no. Water, and they you're made that, mud no, people. You're looking you at the right my, thing. Yeah. You see where my black ring is? No. Hang on. Right. Yeah. There's a green one, black one, right oh, there. Oh, weren't those? Uh, Oh no, we never saw, are... we never went in there. You you saw uh, with your eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Um, I know, well, I was kind of scouting the area with Veda, and I know that there's undead in there. Um, but you I didn't say out loud. No, I didn't say anything, and you guys don't know that area exists. Um, and I didn't say anything on purpose because uh, I was trying to scout the area out, and I didn't want Jack Boone to run in and kill anything. But I will say. Um, I will say something now. Um, I'll say, oh, yeah, don't... Um, I almost forgot to tell you guys, like, that was equivalent of 14 minutes ago that I saw some uh, sarcophagi with undead, what I remember as undead in it. Well, take us to him. I think we should give him the talisman. The what? I was a joke. The tal talisman of ultimate evil. Yeah. Mm. We shouldn't. We shouldn't give it to him. Uh, what are you guys doing? I, I, I don't think that we ever figured out what this thing was either. Here, it was a column, right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I we never saw it. Uh, just Veda saw it, but. Can you tell me? Oh, in the room adjacent. I'm sorry. Oh, this one right here, where I'm clicking. Yes. Yeah, we can go in there too. Why don't yeah. we start? Uh, I was averting my eyes from that face um, at the end of the hallway because we weren't quite sure what the faces were at that point in time. Um, there was one face that we figured out. Um, so yeah, I'll teleport everybody over to this hallway right here. Cool. Does everybody see? Okay. Nope. Oh, where? You I'm just told, I have no idea where to go with. Yeah. You, you moved us to want to have Ross move and go. Oops. <laughs> right as I was letting him go, you like the yeah. map moved. Oh. Okay. Cool, and I'll say um, uh, right behind Neville, the hallway right behind Neville, um, there's a portcullis, I think. And uh, on the other side of the portcullis is some undead. There's also this um, unusual pillar that's uh, that's down here, and um, I think maybe somebody should touch it. Go starts walking toward it. Okay. Let me give you a description of the room. I'm not going to... Veda's not going to be surprised if uh, he gets chopped up into a million bits. He's going to probably <laughs> be like, yeah, whatever. That's that's the magic of this place. This is like... That's only the third time we've seen it. Yeah, it's like Disneyland. Yeah. You suggest that somebody should do a thing and there should be no checks on it, so... Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I know. I made <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna. I am gonna cast guidance on. Um... All right. Uh, let's see here. A lonely pillar of green basalt uh, stands in the center of a 15 foot high chamber. The pillar is remarkable uh, only for its size, six feet in diameter. The rest of the room is completely bare. All right, Go's going to step into the room. I'm going to... Oh, it didn't work. I'm going to also use um, one time a day, uh, plus one resistance bonus on saving throws. 
Uh, that's actually a plus two now because it's for every five levels you possess. Um, and I have a 20 foot aura uh, of number of rounds equal to your cleric level and you get a plus two deflection bonus to AC uh, and combat maneuver defense. So I will, uh, I will trail 18 feet behind him. Um, after, with that, with that, Go is gonna go and try to pick up the column. He's gonna try to pick up the column. Yes. The whole pillar. Yeah. Samson style. Uh, go ahead, make a strength check. Nothing happens when he touches it. No. And you get a plus one to this. I'm just gonna click it. You, can, we can have the plus one after. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, you, the, the column does a bunch. I gave it all I got. It's not moving. So I'm gonna try to turn it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you give it all you've got, and yeah, this thing doesn't budge. Hmm. This thing, this thing's not moving. All okay. right, what's up with that face over there? Um, well, I, have, I, well, while they're looking at the face and figuring that out, I want to uh, actually um, do a perception check to see if I can find any secret doors or anything um, in this room. I want to check the room out. Okay, basically. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, resolve. They're looking at the face. Face. Is got its own description. All right. Um, the eyes of this massive stone face appear to be looking uh, down the south tunnel, and its lips are uh, pursed as if whistling. Uh, a soft current of air escapes from the carving's mouth. A single word has been carved into the wall uh, beneath the face. What is that word? Or is it? In, what language is it? It's in that ancient language of Talese. Oh. Uh... Hey, Veda, when you're done there, uh, can you come read this for us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm not actually uh, reading yeah, this face, by the way. I'm staring off towards this. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, it go will be like, hey, Jack, we're trying to figure out how to open that portcullis. For ya. If only you knew somebody who could teleport to the other side of the I, I didn't I didn't I didn't say that I was That's just what Beta's thinking in the back of her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, there so handsome. Go. So that's the uh, the face as you see it. I think he wants to kiss me. Fuck her up. Sugar lips. Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys are back here. Uh, uh, Veda uh, does manage to find something in that room. Uh, she finds uh, a very small key, uh, a keyhole at the base of the, uh, the pillar. Mm, the key and a keyhole. No, no, just a keyhole. Sorry, not a key. Oh, just a keyhole. Yeah. Um, I teleport back over and I say, hey, guys. Um... Before you uh, before you get into what you want to tell me, um, I found a keyhole at the base of this pillar. A very small keyhole. All right. Uh, can you read this word? And Gil points out the word and Talise. Mm, yeah. Um, I do like to read. Uh, she's going to detect magic on the uh, on the face and the word. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you don't notice any magical auras. Uh, the word says, "Listen." Mm. Uh, the word says listen and uh, she will move closer to the whistling or the the blowing air and she will listen okay make a perception check okay uh, you, guys, listening to you. you guys spend a solid like 30 seconds kind of just like listening waiting for something to happen um, you do hear the air kind of like you know whistling a little bit out of the mouth uh, of the stone face, but um, you don't really notice anything uh, else. You know, if not, yeah, nothing to notice, noticeable or interesting. Mm. So. 
And, and you guys know how to, um, I'm looking at the advanced shortcuts um, for Roll20, and I can um, toggle my mute, and it says I must have the WebRTC voice chat, or uh, Roll20 editor tab focused. How do I focus the um, editor tab? Sorry to interrupt, but I would like to be able to quickly um, toggle my um, mute with my tilde key, if anybody knows. The only thing that I can think of would, is, uh, um, if you, it would be the, the settings, the my settings tab, uh, might be it, because that's where all those voice and audio settings are. Yeah, it's not working. Uh, Damn it. Wait. Caps log. Nope. Nope. I don't know then. Alright, maybe I'll figure it out one of these days. Alright, so uh, we don't hear anything of consequence. So Go is going to, uh, he's going to say, Hey Veda, how do I say that in Talise? And she says, Listen. In Talisi. In Talisi, yeah. And he goes over to this column and says, listen, in Talisi, to the column. Um, nothing happens. And we didn't hear anything when we listened. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and he's going to try to put his ear up to the column and listen. He, no, you don't hear anything. Mm. Nope, Who's got the keys? Anything. Uh, Who's got the key? I'm guessing you do, since you carry most of our stuff. Let me well, let me see here. I thought we picked up. Let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. No, I thought we had a small key. But back when we went when we went back to the major city. I kind of cleaned out the group gold, and maybe I deleted some stuff, but I don't know. Anyway, um, she says, and Daria, there's a small keyhole down there. You think maybe you could work some magic? Yeah, yeah, I can give it a go. Where's the small keyhole again? And uh, she'll come over here, wherever it is, and point directly to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's see what I can do. She blows on her... Um lockpicks and uh, warms them up on her blouse of displacement and gives it a, go gives it a try. I'm sorry, what are you trying to do again? Uh, I was, uh, I'm using my um, disabled device on the um, keyhole. Oh, you already know that there's a trap? Oh, oh shit. Yeah. No, no, I didn't know. I thought that um, whoever looked at it... Yeah, you said that you were going to uh, warn him if there was a trap. Well, yeah, you would have known that there was a trap. There All right. Top. Shit. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the lock is trapped. Yeah, the lock is trapped. Okay. So, um, what kind of trap is it? This is zap trap. Mm. Zap trap. Oh, this dang zap trap. Turns into zap brain again. Right. Basically yeah. useless. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna um try to disable the zap trap. Go's gonna try to see if there's like a specific like note that the the statue seems to be whistling, or if there's anything else around the statue that, other than the air coming out of it, that and uh, the word. I'm sorry, you're gonna do what exactly? He wants you're to look do... cl more closely at the statue to see if there's something else that can be adjusted or messed with, and okay. and and see if the air coming out of it is like whistling in a specific key or note. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, you could pr the the ear holes. You could probably shove your hand in the ear holes. There might be something in their ears. He's going to blow in its ear, and if it doesn't do anything, then he's going to reach his hand in there. Okay. Wet, Willie. Yeah, uh, which which ear? Oh, both of them are that way? I'll... Uh, which yeah. way is it looking? Um, let's go back. It's, so... it, it said it's looking down the south hall, so it's looking to the left. So he would try the... What's his left, which would be its right ear? Okay. Or wait, no. It's looking to the left. Whichever ear so it's looking at or not looking at? The way it, what it's looking at, basically. Oh, it's looking to the south? Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. 
Uh, and there's a symbol of death trap in the ear. Activated by touch. Welcome to this world. <laughs> so you're reaching into its left ear? Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, make a, uh, a reflex save. This is crazy. I had my mic on mute. Andy was saying, wait, wait, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's why I moved. Better. I looked over and I saw that what um, <laughs> Go was doing. You couldn't hear me because my mic was on mute. It's terrible. <laughs> I need a clicker, like, yeah. you know, a game show. Like, um, <laughs> Does your headset me. have a mute on it? Because I just use the mute on my headset when I do uh, it. No, I'm, I'm using my Sennheiser. Um, HX six double X's or whatever the hell they are. They sound good, but they're not a gaming headset. Okay. So uh, as you stick your hand in the ear, uh, it's, uh, the wind that's coming through the the mouth of the face kind of just abruptly, you know, goes full force, uh, sends you all the way back almost to this portcullis of daggers, and you kind of catch your footing and you uh, barely, uh, you know, prevent yourself from being slammed into this uh, to this uh, board call. So. Well, it's I, I'll say, I'll walk back up here. Well, it's left here, I think it's the wrong one. And Andy says, okay, well, um, what would you have done had you heard Andy saying, wait, wait, wait? Because this he is kind of like crappy. He would, he would have. I don't normally have to toggle my mute so he, he, much, he would but... have waited. But the, I, 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 I succeeded at the save, so... Well, she's not going to chat. Yeah. Oh, you're muted again. You went back on mute. Yeah, I'm going to have to get used to this. Um, let's just pretend I didn't do that then, yeah. just because I failed to unmute my mic when I was yeah. trying to stop him. Yeah, I, I succeeded at the save. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, what was Andy doing again? Uh, I thought you were... Looking at I, that keyhole, no? I, well, yeah, I mean, I was, but I turned my shoulder and I saw what Go was doing, what he has been told not to fucking do, and that's <laughs> do things, you know, on his own. And yeah, that's, true. that's when I turned my shoulder and I said, wait, 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 but my mic was on mute the whole time. So, so what you're saying is, is that while you were examining a keyhole, you happened to notice 60, almost 70 feet away go about to like put his hands in in this in this space yeah yeah it's like hold on guys if i you know it's like if i trigger this trap you know people are gonna get zapped so it I'm seems like, legit like if he's examining a hole he wants to see where his friends are in relation to you know where well, he is just in case exactly, he does trigger trap. that's exactly and as soon as i got started go started doing his thing and um that's when i was like wait wait what are you doing go you know, and that's when I started running over saying, wait, wait, wait. But you guys couldn't hear me because my mic was on mute. Okay. Um, uh, so, so, go we'll walk, walk over to you guys. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to not play with that anymore. <laughs> I would, But I think there might be something in the right ear, or there might be something going with this thing. And he says, oh, okay, are you guys ready for me to um, disable this trap? Yes. His name's not Stop. <laughs> All right, with 52, uh, you make short work of the trap um, using your, uh, you know, your normal bag. This is not even a, a magical trap, just a mechanical zap trap. Um, and yeah, uh, it looks like it's, uh, you know, the keyhole is safe to be uh, used. Uh, you're not quite sure what it'll do. Um, and you get the impression that you actually need to have a key, a proper key to do it. Uh, it doesn't look like there's really a, um, you know, you can't really open it uh, using uh, any kind of, you know, toolbox or anything. So, so. Oh, okay. I know we found keys. We found a key in the water pool in the first room we were in. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember what that key was. I don't think that we've key. ever found a use for it. 
No, that key opened the door here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. We got the medallion that's for the ship. Yeah. We got the ru the uh, ring of keys for the the guys that were in the all the dead people that were in those um, dead guys yeah. cells. Did the hag have a key? No. Oh no, that she had the ring of keys. She had the ring of keys. That's right. Uh, the mud thing. All right, well, let's go kill these, uh, what are presumed undead in these coffins. What do you say? I, I don't remember any other keys. So this is a, a lock that is unpickable? Um, Essentially, yeah. I mean, it's not like uh, it's a lock. It's just a key, you know, like a keyhole. It doesn't look like it's locking anything. It's like um, there's more to it than that. So, Can, maybe you guys uh, should check out this other ear over here, and maybe there's a key inside it. Maybe, maybe. What do you think? Um, all right, Andy's not going to be uh, bitchy about it because I'm going to rip on what I did. Okay, so tell me what happened, go. So if you stick your hand in the right ear, or its right ear, or I'm sorry, the right ear as you look at it, which would be its left ear, it it shoots out air. And pushes you uh, back towards the portcullis. Yeah. All right, of well, daggers. Me... Of daggers. There are daggers. Yeah, the the portcullis does have some daggers. Probably wouldn't have done that whole, a whole lot of damage anyway. Let's go investigate, Beta. I'm gonna, um, I think we already uh, perceived it, but now that we know that it's trapped, um, I think I want to. I would just like to. It's really weird for there be to be a port like portcullis of daggers. Like the only thing difference between a spike and a dagger is a handle. So, why does the gate have handles? Good question. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, check out the uh, the right ear and see if I can see anything in there. Um, well, you, I mean, you're gonna have to kind of stick your hand in there. Uh, you're not. Oh, okay. What if I stuck an eye in there? Would I would the eye be able to fit in there? If a fist can fit in there, the eye should be able to fit in there, right? No, no, no. His magic eye is what he's talking about. Right. Okay. Um, um, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I say, uh, and Doria, there's only one way to f a girl. Um, stick your hand in there. Uh, I already detect magic on the whole thing, and I didn't detect mm -hmm. any magic, so okay. it doesn't appear to be magical, so I don't know... Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, it was a reflex save. That's kind of meta, but anyways. All right, if you guys think I can do it, maybe. Um, I would. Like... I, I I don't have the best reflexes, but I was able to stop myself before I hit the dagger. All right, Ellie, you, you, can... you you have those cat-like reflexes that. All right, all right. So uh, Andy slowly reaches her hand very carefully. And Actually, the Go hand. is gonna hold on to Andy and stand against the wall here. Right. Okay. Uh, so go and grabs a hold of Andy's waist. It's a little, uh, I wouldn't say inappropriate, but it's definitely uncomfortable between the two of you. Uh, you know, Andy kind of puts her little paws inside the ear, kind of wiggles it around a little bit, and uh, notices uh, a small green key. Hmm. What she pulls out. Of so I pull out a small green key. Yep. All right. Um, I uh, retrieve the key and I do like a Zelda move. I don't make the noise like I would normally, but um, <laughs> I say, ha ha, a key. Oh, very good. Stick that key in that hole. All right. So you think it goes in this hole and Andy looks at it. Does it look like it would fit in this hole? Absolutely. All right. So she sticks it in the hole. And uh, okay, you want to turn it? Stand away. Stand aside, boys. I'm turning the key. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should cast shield on myself. So I am. I'm going to cast shield on myself. Okay. You want to put it in the chat? How many more uh, can, uh, times can you cast shield? It's infinite. It's from one of my magic items. Uh, it only lasts a minute. Um... 
Mac okay, Judge Guidum's so doing all your spells for you. It's the way Pathfinder is built to work. <laughs> um, yeah, it just says shield. It doesn't actually do it. I actually have the spell, I think, so I'll put the spell up for you. Okay. Uh, so what do you? Are you? Oh, he's. Yeah, sorry. That's just the, that's the spell. Yeah. So for the reference. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, Andy, are you turning the key? Yeah, I turn the key. Uh, what direction? Andy stops and she thinks about it. Um, Andy says, "Everybody, what direction should I change? Turn it." I mean, what normally you turn a. Um... Oh, and I'm sorry, you'd be like. Um, you'd be, where is it? Normally you would turn it clockwise. Clock to the right. Yeah. Clockwise, yeah. No. No. Um, I can't do a Bob Barker voice, but uh, if I did, I would say turn it regular. Uh. I don't know if, um, you know, the Earth uh, locks work like the Pathfinder locks, but you guys want me to turn it to the right? Or do you want to look Yeah. Through? All right, uh, so I turn it to the right. Okay. Uh, Andy gives it, a, you know, a, a full uh, revolution uh, clockwise spin. Uh, yeah. You would want to try left then? No, left somebody else can see. try left. I already uh, okay. spun the, <laughs> the uh, Russian roulette wheel. I, I, I'll she do it. Away. Go grabs the key and turns it left. Okay. Uh, go uh, gives it uh, a full revolution spin uh, uh, counterclockwise and uh, uh, you notice uh a loud click sound, um, and I'll wait a minute until Joe comes back. I don't want to, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. he's gonna need to come up with a better situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, if he's gonna be doing this every Sunday, and he's gonna be being distracted by those girls like the whole time um well that's the thing i don't think it's um you know like i've got two boys and i'm down in the basement it's just they just need to stay upstairs you know dad's downstairs he's in the basement sometimes they come down sometimes they don't what you is know so it's just why is she she just hi may hello oh, may how are you doing <laughs> may may can you hear me Put, give me a thumbs up <laughs> All right, you need to put the headphones down and go give Kathy a hug. <laughs> right. Go on. <laughs> I think that worked. <laughs> yeah, it's children. You just tell children what to do and they do it. That's why there's so many pedophiles. It's like you just tell children what to do and they do it. It's disgusting. People take advantage of kids. Oh, she had the AKGs on. She didn't. She probably didn't hear you. No, I, I'm not looking for. It. So I'm sorry. May wanted me to look for the tablet. I'm not exactly sure where I packed it. I spent a minute looking for it. But... Okay. So Gobel heard a click. Did anything happen? Uh, a moment goes by, and then. Uh... A giant blast uh, of air kind of shoots out from the south over here. If anybody would have been standing in front of it, that probably would have been uncomfortable for them. Um, and then, uh, and then a, a blast, you know, from that pillar, you know, uh, it creates an oval opening um, about six feet tall and about three feet wide. Uh, inside, uh, there is a coffin uh, made from purple wood. Uh, sitting up right in the cavity. Noise. Ghost walks backward. 
Um, Veda. Jack. Yes. We might need your input. For what? There's a coffin. Even oh. more powerful undead. Okay, um, let's see here. I think that's a deflection bonus. Yeah. Um, and detect undead doesn't work in this place, right? Uh, I think uh, detect undead has been, hasn't it? Uh, I don't, I don't... Not through, yeah. not through things. Not yeah, not through things. Right. It's just just in the room. Mm -hmm. Okay. What what about like a coffin? Would it work? Would I get the impression that it would work through a coffin? No. Oh, the only time you did get it to work was when you're in that extra dimensional space. That's yeah. that's why I was thinking about it. So no, you don't. Okay. So there's just a, a coffin. Yep. Right. It's kind of sitting upright. Um, it's it's on the it's on the south side over here. I'm gonna try and open the coffin. Okay. Jack uh, just goes ahead and uh, yeah. I'm gonna stand uh, over here. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, the coffin opens, uh, bearing a corpse. Uh, what looks like uh, a male half elf. Half -elf. He has a, uh, a horrid, mummified grimace of pain on his face. And it's easy to see that uh, he was garroted. He was what? Garroted. 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 Mm. A, a garrot. He's been choked by a piece of piano wire. Basically, yeah. Mm. I, uh, I smash its face in my hammer. Uh, right. it, yeah. Whenever he raises his hammer back, I said, "Wait, please." This is La how we always. Um, La last time I trouble. did that, we had a much a big mon a creature attack us that we weren't ready for. As soon as I did it. All right, I'll hold on. Uh, Veda says, "Did you put that periop of plus or periapt of plus four wisdom on?" No. I just remember. Was... I just remember thirty minutes ago when I was when I did the exact same thing. So where is the where is the where exactly is the opening? I was under the impression it was in the 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 square. I was over here. Uh, I said again. I'm sorry. What was the question? Where is the opening? Uh, it's on the south side. Yeah, it's on the, the facing the south wall. Oh, it's facing the south wall. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to be like. Like over here. Okay. So is everybody ready? Um, yeah, uh, well, Andoria's not back yet. Are you guys... I am now. So what are you guys doing? Just Waiting for Andy to say she's ready. Yeah. I'm going to smash this face. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you want to check it out first or no I, I, yeah, yeah i think we should just check it out before we start smashing things mm -hmm. i Go shouldn't ahead. be offering these things you guys like, nope i'm checking it out it's too late smash, smash first ask questions later you know? no yeah i think that's ridiculous well that's this group you know the next group might not do that no the next group is, uh, i'm fine with the next group doing that not this group okay no i'm gonna check it out <laughs> All right, go, so you notice, you notice a couple and, things. Go and check. That's what we do. If you guys don't tell us that differently, if if, it's exactly. an, if there's a possibility much. of this being an undead, I want to hit it before it. Uh, you know, just because it looks undead doesn't mean it's actually undead. Well, obviously, it, it may undead. not. I'm it might establish that it's not. So, <laughs> in order to kind of check it out, this is kind of like a room in and of itself. Know that it's like. Six feet by three feet. Um, the opening is a six foot wide by three foot, you know, wide. It's I'm sorry, six feet tall and three feet wide. But it, you know, it's it's pretty big. Uh, so you'll kind of have to go inside there to kind of check things out, just so you know. Um, and then you would kind of need to go in there unless you had some sort of long reach. Uh, if you want to smash this thing, <laughs> you would have to do that. So. Oh, okay. Um, wait a moment. Well, it's it does it seem like it's bigger than this column? Uh, I may have made a mistake on how big the column. Because this column's is. ten feet in diameter, the way that it is right now. I may have made a mistake on how big the column should be. It should be a little bit bigger than that. 
Uh, it should be something more like this. So that's 10 feet, okay, in diameter. Yeah, I'm sorry, I kind of misjudged. I thought I had no it, but it's, yeah. They're, they're supposed to be a pretty sizable, you know, little area in there, so. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go in there and check it out. In that okay. case, I want to be I'm happy to do it. right here. All right, we'll use your perception check before, so you go in. Uh, you notice a couple things. Uh, there is a... Uh, from the ceiling uh, by the side of the coffin is a, uh, a woven cord of human hair, uh, which is attached to the, the, the ceiling of the cavity. Mm -hmm. You also notice uh, that the corpse is holding a metal scroll uh, tube. Scroll and, tube. Um, and you also notice uh, uh, there is a pendant around uh, the neck of the corpse. Okay, I'm not going to touch anything. Um, I'm, I would like to detect magic and um, and see if I can't uh, find out what a little bit more about what these things might be. Okay, uh, the pendant is magical. Okay, and I would like to learn what I can about it. Well, that's not right. Hang on. I need to roll a spell crap check. All right. It looks like a uh, necklace of fireballs. Oh, wow. That would be so awesome. I want that necklace. Even though, no, I don't know if I can wear necklace it. Necklace of fireballs can be really bad. Mm -hmm. Nah, not at our level. Well, yeah, okay. That, so, that wouldn't be bad for me at my level. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, like, I just looked these up for something else. They and can necklace of fireballs, they... if you get hit with fire, they can all go off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But still, okay. the low How... level ones are like 70 C6 or something damage to you. How and, much, uh... Uh, and how many different uh, uh, things does it have? Yeah, how many little balls does it have on there? Uh, let's see here. That'll tell us how many uh, fireballs it has. Yeah, it looks like it has five. Oh, nice. And their sizes? Um, I'm going to have to look that up. I'm sorry. Um, let's see here. So it looks like there are, uh, there are, uh, it looks like it's a type two. Uh, I'll be right back. So it has one that does 66 and um, another two that does 46 and another two that does 26 damage. Uh, gotcha. Yes. Uh, so, so, and Joe's all gone again. And uh, was the woven cord of human hair, was that magical? No. No? Nope. Oh. Sorry, if you didn't hear me, I said no. Uh, okay. And um, the scroll tube, I obviously have to touch it and get the, get the scrolls out of it in order to uh, to check it out, which I'm... <sighs> okay. Um, so you're yeah, I'm it. just going to tell everybody uh, there's a necklace of fireballs type 2 uh, from what I can tell in here. 
and um, there's a woven cord of human hair um, coming from the ceiling. And there's also a scroll tube uh, with probably some scrolls in it. Let's. Um, I'm a little apprehensive about touching this. Does anybody want to come in here and check it out? Okay. Go. Uh, Jack's standing next to it, but if Jack doesn't do it, go walk up. Yeah, no, if, if, if he moves up, up the screen, I'm going to go in. And... Mm -hmm. uh, She's not going to touch anything, um, and uh, she'll let somebody else go, go in there. Go will try to take off the necklace, and okay. once it's off, he'll he'll cut the thing's head. Okay. Uh, well, how are you going to cut the head off? Of he'll the take horse? his sword and just try to cut its head off. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh... You're able to take the uh, the uh, the amulet off, uh, you know, normally, and yeah, you with one fell swoop with your great sword or your scimitar, you kind of deftly uh, uh, remove the head from the body of the corpse, and it kind of pops and then, down. And then, pops. then he'll look at Jack and like point at the head in case Jack wants to smash it. <laughs> no, um, I'm 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 quite fine. Okay, and then he'll grab the scroll tube and take it out and hand it to Veda. Okay. Uh, she says, cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um, and um, does is the scroll tube sealed up? It is sealed. Yeah, um, yeah okay. I want to check it for traps before I open it. Okay. Uh, go, actually, if, if, if it was sealed, Go would have taken it to Andy and asked her to inspect it. But... Uh, you don't notice any traps. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll open it up and check out those scrolls. Okay. Check out the scroll. And then Go's going to look at them over her shoulder. Okay. Uh, so there is uh, a note in Talise. Veda says, uh, to sail the ship that smile uh, that is smi smiled upon, the silver necklace must be donned. Okay, we already knew that. Yeah, and uh, Veda goes, Psh, we already knew that. We figured that one out on our own. Dang, dog. I want a, I want a refund. <laughs> I want a new note. <laughs> I already know that one. Um, and, um, okay, so, uh, she says, uh, to, um, and Daria, she says, hey, and Daria, come over here. And, uh, oh, okay. she points to the, um, the woven cord of human hair that's on the ceiling. And, she's uh, spider climb up to it so she can, um, visually inspect it. Was that the only thing in the scroll case? Yes. Okay. okay. And Veda's gonna say, do you think you could, um... Pull that woven cord and do an acrobatics out of that chamber um, in case something happens. Yeah, I can literally um, walk up on the ceiling and um, do whatever it, we think it should do. Um, so, okay, so what is it connected to? There's a cord of human hair. I'm connected to the ceiling. To the ceiling. Within, yeah, in the small kind of coat. Uh, you know. And it's just dangling. Uh, it's connected to the ceiling. It's, yeah, just kind of like, um, yeah. Yeah, like a dingleberry or something? <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Kind of like, you know, um, uh... Like a pull cord? Like yeah, a... Yeah, like a pull cord. Right. Yeah. Okay, so how long is it? Uh, it's about three feet long. Um, if, uh, you would look at where the kind of corpse, uh, used to have a head, it kind of goes just slightly below the neck level, uh, down. So it's anything. down over here. No, mm. no, no. It's in the it's in the uh, <laughs> it's in the area. I mean, it's right by the the in if, inside the column, inside that little uh, uh, the cubby hole, whatever you want to call it. So um, can I walk up the ceiling or up the wall and then up the ceiling and get a close look at it? Do I get the impression yeah. that the corpse was hung, was killed by this dangling strand of hair, like? 
Uh, no. 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 This is not like, uh, it's not, yeah, this is not wire that could strangle. I mean, the way, yeah, it, the, the corpse is definitely strangled by, you know, something sharp, you know. Okay. And this is just, you know, natural hair, which has kind of been woven into a thing, so. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, Veda uh, says if if you're able, pull that uh, pull that hair and then jump out. Um, do you want me to pull it? I'm gonna inspect it before I just pull it. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you do notice that you can probably get a good touch. Um, so that's, is it like if I look up the ceiling, is it going like through the ceiling, or is it just literally attached to the ceiling? It's kind of like attached, kind of like a. Like it would probably like if you tugged it, it would probably respond. You know, it's like it probably would happen. Okay, so I give it a tug and then I do an acrobatics check, um, back down to the uh, floor. Okay, go ahead and make an acrobatics check. All right, yeah, you just kind of do a uh, so you give it a tug, and then you kind of just do like a back handspring kind of thing, uh, out of the uh, out of the opening, and as soon as you, you know. Uh, make it outside of the area. Uh, yeah, the whole ceiling kind of comes down and crushes everything inside the opening. Um, just slams it like completely into into pieces. So, yeah, had you been in that area without jumping out, it would have been uh, probably crushed. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Right. So that's I guess the end of that then. She says, "Oh, good job." Well, it's weird that it, we, I didn't. That wasn't a trap. I'm a little meta pissed that uh, I didn't um, trigger a trap on that, but whatever. Did I fail my perce perceived traps check? I'd just like to know. Really, I don't know if that really counts as a trap. I mean... The way it's written here, it's not described as a trap. It's just described as like this is a thing that's going to do happen. Okay. Alright. It's fine. I lived. We all lived. So are we going okay. up to the undead? Veda yells down to the group and she says, hey, come up here and let's um, flip these coffin lids and uh, kill, us some, uh, kill us some undead if they're in here. Gobble, you coming down? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, um, do you want me to I'll try to open? Who... Do you want me to try to open the portcullis? Or do no, you want to just teleport okay. us through? Yeah, I'm gonna teleport everybody to um, over in the hallway. All right. Let me give you a, a description of the room here. Um. Okay, uh, yeah. A total of six stone sarcophagi lie in this chamber, four of normal size and two uh, larger ones. The gate guarding the room's eastern entrance has dozens of curved daggers welded to its bars facing outward. So towards you. No, well, towards Jack, at least. So. Okay. Everybody want to move their guys over to the other side where Veda is so that I can actually teleport you? Okay, and Veda says, there's a sarcophagi I was talking about. Does anyone have any words before I start opening these? Maybe we should um, check the room out before we start um, opening and smashing. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, sure. I'll uh, step in and uh, check Some, the room out. Sometimes checking the room out causes things to start opening and smashing. Mm -hmm. That need to be <laughs> smashed. Yep. I'll so, check it out. I'm going to try not to touch the sarcophagi if I can help it. But Yeah, Andy's looking and not um, touching anything. Okay. <clears throat> Um, no, you notice that the um, the sarcoph sarcophagus, each each of the sarcophagus lids are kind of sealed on 
on the sarcophagus with uh, like a like a thin layer of mortar, mortar, which you're probably going to have to chisel out, you know, uh, to remove the lids. Uh, you notice that the portcullis is actually locked in place. Uh, you will have, you could you could uh, just make the disable device check to to kind of get it to unlock, and uh, it might just spring up. Uh, what is the oh this thing over down here? No, we're gonna trap those guys in if they get up. Um. And uh, with the 41, did I notice anything hidden? Any hidden boxes or walls or, or anything? I'm sorry? Did I uh, notice any hidden hidden doors or anything? Nope. Nothing. Uh, yeah. Nothing out of the okay. ordinary. She's going to continue her, um, her tradition of detecting magic and uh, detecting poison. And she's going to try to, you know, scan it throughout the room. Okay. Uh, yeah. No detects. No. Yeah. Nothing comes up on your uh, on your detection. Uh, okay. She says it looks clear to me. Um, uh, if you can, pull them out and throw them up against those spikes. Seems like a fitting way for an undead to die. All right. Go and Jack. Do you want to uh, Hulk smash in there? You go left. I'll go I'll right. Cast guidance. I I am no I am not some barbarian, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speak for yourself. But uh, what's that what's is... wrong with barbarians? <laughs> I'm not some barbarian sorcerer. I I, I Hulk smash very well, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna cast uh, guidance on um, whoever's trying to open uh, the sarcophagus. I mean, you can cast guidance. I mean, it's not gonna be a check. You just have to. Like Chisel it open. Right. Okay. Um, Beta says, uh, Gobel, don't you have a uh, an any tool, a multi tool? Can't yeah. you uh, change that and and do a chisel and hammer that Mortar hammer that mortar down? Yes, I can. I can get these open. Uh, awesome. How, how are we doing this, Jack? You want to do your do one at a time, or <laughs> just split up and just do them? Jack, are you there? What? Sorry, I was reading one of my spells. Do you want to do this one at a time, or do you want to split up and just start opening them? Yeah, let's just start opening them. And just open one and see what happens, and then do one he, at a time. He hands Jack a uh, the, one of the any tools. Okay. And he starts hammer chipping away at the one on the right. Oh, what's currently our left, but what he's been there right. Okay. Um, so I don't know if it's like really a race or anything, but uh, <laughs> you that cat. Uh, but yeah, you go around and uh, you know you uh, uh, start you know removing the mortar uh, around the uh, the sarcophagus that you're you're staying in front of. Uh, when Jack finally removes uh, all the mortar around his, uh, and then Go does it around his, Go actually flips the lid on his first. That's what you guys are doing. That's what you guys want to do. Uh, and as, as you open that lid, uh, they all kind of blast off. Uh, nice. Uh, everybody needs to make a, a real Boys. Combat. Yes. yes. Combat. <laughs> combat. Okay. Um, Love in that combat. Are, do we want to do this tonight, or do we want to work on finish trying to work on Joe's character, or are we just holding off again for another week? I say we spend the next thirty minutes, or the the first thirty minutes, like right when we get on at seven thirty. Let's let's spend thirty minutes on um on the the oh, I can't remember it was monkey um monkey trail behind the monkey house hive. I don't monkey house. Get in the, the, the monkey Let's spend house. the first, yeah, thirty minutes on Monkey House, and um, yeah, and if Joe has not looked at the Undead Lord no, or the Jew we, Jew we, Oracle, we, we have to make him a character. He's already said that. He's not making his character. We have to do that. I, I you know, I just, you know, as far as like looking through all the spells and stuff, I, I don't know. I mean, I, if I get it's time to do it, I'll do it. But I've just been so busy. Yeah, it's been a busy week. And it's it's going to be another busy 
several weeks. So. We need a rogue. Then I'll just be a rogue. I'm just gonna be a rogue then. But I'll be like um, maybe a different rogue than I, than Andy is. I'll be like a gnomish. Can I? They don't have arcane tricksters in uh, Pathfinder, do they? I think they do. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I thought they did. Yeah, I think they do. All right, then I'll be a gnomish arcane trickster. I've always wanted to be one. Okay. All right. Now. And okay. I also have to figure out like my little spells to um, trick people, but that's fine. <clears throat> There's a link. Check it out a couple of times. Yep. So everybody needs their own furnishes. Yes. I think we all had. I'm the only one on the no. Uh, me and Veda are the only one on the turn order. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Go. I haven't rolled yet. I don't think you guys. They no play. Mine's just taking time to open. Okay, um, so Jack has a, uh, everybody's, is, is, is Jack or is it everybody that Jack is with has immunity to fear? Everybody within, uh, 30 feet. Is that, like, at all times, or is that? Yeah, yeah, that feat I took, I realized it actually negates one of my prepared spells. Um, yeah, it's just on all the time. Could you, could you post that in the chat? Do I see it? You don't mind. Oh, because obviously it comes into play here. I hit the button, didn't work. Uh, people are, uh, yeah. Your aura of courage expands, uh, twice the radius, uh, emanation, eyes within the area. You know, okay, so that's still within 20 feet of you. Looks like everybody's within 20 feet of you. Okay. Uh, be cognizant of that. And um, Veda, you see uh, uh, two mummies. Uh, they look larger than your normal mummy. Uh, they look like maybe mummified. Uh, Double mummies? Of, uh, yeah, they're like large creature mummies. Um, I can make these a little bigger. Uh, oh, double mummies. Oh, we'll be yes. A little bit here. Do they have diabetes? Uh, yeah. They, yeah. Well, look at that face. You'll have to get in there and, and find. It out. looks like Simon Pegg is a mummy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Vita, what would you like to do? Um, yeah, I want to know what I know about these guys here, with their things. Wait, is there just the two of them? They they didn't blow off the ones we were lifting. That's correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, all all six lids pop blew off at the same time. And, uh, yeah, these guys, um, yeah, popped out here and already, uh... We don't see any guys in any of the other ones? That's correct. No other, no other, uh, corpses are coming up, popping up right now. Okay. Uh, what skill check would I roll to know what I know about these guys? Uh, knowledge religion. Uh, ready? Okay. Uh, I don't think that's good enough. That's not good enough to know. Dang, a 24 yet. doesn't teach me anything. I know oh, that they're mummies. You had a 24. I saw the 22. The 24 does. Uh, yeah, these are mummies. Uh, they look like mummified corpses of some kind of giant. 
you'd have to kind of unravel them to find out what kind of giant uh, beast on size alone. You're thinking maybe uh, either a stone or a hill giant. Uh, mm. um, and they're not, they're large, they're not huge, right? Uh, they are large. They're large. And uh, you would know they're weak, they have a, a weakness to fire. Uh, you, know, you would know that they have a fear effect um, of despair, uh, which causes paralysis. You would know that uh, if you get slammed uh, by one of these things, uh, there is a, a, a boom rot effect, um, which um, is not, you know, something you'd want to, you know, acquire. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and that's about as much as you know. Um, uh, they have damage resistance, undead traits, uh, and that's about it. So. Okay. Um, I don't think that they are immune to a hungry pit. <laughs> okay. Um, I was. <laughs> I'm gonna cast um, hungry pit on. Um, the guy whose balls are now black with a ring. They get, he's got black ring on his balls. And the black ring. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say, uh, don't let them touch you. All right, can you guys see that hit there? Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Um, he needs to make a reflex save. DC twenty two. Yeah. Mm hmm. Eight. That is not good enough. Uh, yeah. So you see the mummy and the sarcophagus uh, kind of all just kind of fall into this hungry pit. Uh, you hear some like crunching and just, uh, uh, you know, it, kind of a disgusting, like, you know, you know, crushing sounds uh, emanating from the pit. Uh, so he takes, uh, what? 46 uh, damage. Uh, I need to I need to look up create pit. Hang on a second. It's um, 10 foot deep per two levels, so that's 40 feet. Yeah. So 4d6 and um, 46 falling damage and he'll take 4d6 bludgeoning damage um, yeah, each round. That he's so in wait, the it's, it's uh, 10 feet per two levels, is what you're saying? 10 feet per two levels, and I'm a ninth level caster. Okay, so yeah, you'd have four levels there. Okay, yeah. got it. So that's... Um, do you want me to roll them separately, or can I roll 8d6? Nope, you're going to do them separately. All right. 4d6 falling damage, and 4d6 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And the climb DC is 35. Okay. And okay. Okay. Uh, would you like to do anything else? That will be the end of my turn. Okay. All right. The mummy that's in the pit is going to try to climb out. And what was it, the DC for coming out 35? 35. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get out. So he's, uh, yeah, he doesn't make it very far. Uh, this other um, mummy uh, jumps out of the sarcophagus, uh, kind of runs over, and uh, jump, kind of just jumps onto the sarcophagus, and then uh, he's going to make a slam attack against Jack. Jack has an AC of 26. Yeah, I believe so. Um, that's a hit. He successfully slams into you. Um, you're gonna need to make a fort save. Fort save. Oh, come on. Thirty-one 
31. All right. 31 is uh, good enough to save against the effect of, uh, you know, of the slam. Uh, he does do some damage to you, uh, which is not a trivial amount of damage. Why are you clicking so many buttons? That doesn't seem right. Uh, yeah, you took 19 points of damage from this uh, massive slam from this uh, large-sized mummy. Mm. Mm. All right, ne Neville, it is your turn. What would you have to do? Uh, have this thing work at like a normal pace? Have this thing work at a normal? Pace? No, that's not an option. It, it's like every like 10 seconds, it just freezes for a couple seconds. Yeah, mine does that. Especially when I'm online, it really takes a long time. Was someone laundry? Was that someone's laundry? That's a horn. Okay. Yeah, I want to smoke. <clears throat> Throwing two bombs. And the one that's obviously not in the pit. Okay. All right. Yeah, just yeah, point them out before you do that. All right. Uh, 17 and 20 against touch. Um, yeah, or close connect. And this is, uh, fire damage is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. It's all fire damage. And they're on fire. Okay. So, uh, and Brian, can you adjust their size? Are yeah. they large or are they bigger than that? Uh, they, they're large. They're oh, large. Yeah. Can you fit them into those squares that they're uh, the? I can. They kind of are. I mean, this guy's kind of in. You know. Uh, that one's got a. Yeah, his head is kind of sticking out a little bit, so I can move him down a little bit. That's all right. He's more like in these four squares. Okay, I just like wanted that. to make sure. Okay. Yeah, and the other one's kind of like right there. So, uh, he was encroaching upon. Uh, uh got my bubble. It's all me, by the way. All right. So if this is a Pokemon game, you would see that uh, your attack was this is a, it was very effective, you know. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, fire seems to really light these things up. Uh, yeah. Would you like to do anything else? Nope. That's it. All right. Go. Go is gonna stay his normal size. He is going. Really? Yeah. For, for <laughs> at first. No. <laughs> Just he's, All right. he's avoiding this pit until he yeah. gets behind this guy and climbs okay. up on his coffin and then he's gonna okay. enrage. And okay, you would uh, you would I would take it, a, one attack of opportunity. Yeah. Because as, as I went through this square, I would. Right. So... I, that was either that or have a chance to fall in the pit. I decided to take that. Yeah, that pit's hard. All right, so go has an AC of 27. Uh, uh, without being big, yes. Uh, with a 3, he does not connect. All right, then he's going to enrage and take one attack. And he's going to say, Veda, sometimes your commands just are ridiculous. What's that? I didn't, you were breaking up. What's that? Veda, sometimes your commands are just ridiculous. What command? Not to let him touch us. Oh. All right. All right. Yeah, he looks like he's in, uh, he's ready. Yeah, he, he looks like he, you know. Oh, it, th uh, that would have been at a plus two to attack because it's blinking. You're blinking, yep. All right, would you like to do anything else? Oh, that, that actually, it should be more damage. That 3d8 plus, that should have been 3d8 plus a lot more than that. Oh, okay. I think 15. 
I didn't turn on any of my buffs. So you want to go through the buffs you have again? Because you have like a million of them. Uh, so I'm raging, which gives me a strength bonus of a plus six, which mm -hmm. it gives me plus three to my uh, damage. Mm -hmm. A large bonus, which uh, it, for some reason this thing always does 3d8, which gives me the 3d8. Uh, mm -hmm. And another two bonus to my strength, which gives me another one damage. Uh, I'm actually not going to count power attack on this one because I did choose that before I did it. And then the haste, which just gives me the speed and the AC bonus. Okay. But so uh, it should have been an additional f at least five damage on top of that. So, well, well no. So I, I, I got the, 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 the... So there's a plus four. Well, how much... So what's, what's your total strength modifier bonus? Because you have four from... So you have three from so raging. When Wait. I'm, when, I'm, when I'm raging... It's oh, plus three, right? Uh, it ends up being... being large is another plus one. So that's so you got a four uh, should... there. Yeah. So, uh, this doesn't adjust it. Um, let me hit the recalc and see if that does it. Uh, this is... The, the character sheet being so slow is annoying. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in total, I end up with a plus eight strength modifier, which... Uh, gives me plus eight as my modifier. All right, it's a twenty-seven okay. strength. So that's just straight up strength. So you have a plus four modifier from having like an eighteen, I guess. And then yeah. you, uh, you, you, with the extra raging and the size, I could have a plus eight, just yeah. in strength alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, then. Um. The damage ends up being a plus 12, is what it is, if I'm not using my power attack. Okay. Uh, this so one was guess... rolled at a plus 8, so I should have had 4 more. So yeah, it should have been 25. Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out where the other 4 is coming from. I guess 2 from your magic sword? Oh, no, this... Oh, um... Uh, it's, a, it's a plus 4 enhancement to my claws. When I'm raging. Oh. Okay. Uh, I have a I have a plus two, and then I have a, a magic item that gives me uh, increases that to a plus four. Or is it a feat that increases? It's that an amulet plus... of mighty fists. No, that's the plus two enhancement, and then I have a thing that increases the enhancement by plus two when I'm raging. Okay, all right, fair enough. That makes sense. Okay, it's still not dead. Uh, it looks like it might drop at any moment, though. Uh, would you have to do anything else? Um, that is it. All right, guys. If you're watching, that's how you min max a uh, a blood rager. So. Um, and I it, it, usually I use power attack, which gives me an additional plus six damage on top of that. Because they're on he's on level what eleven now, and what is it for every every three levels or whatever? Uh, how does power attack work? You get it's a plus it's a negative two to attack, but a plus or. It's a negative and, one to attack a plus so two. So it, sta it for... starts at a negative uh, three, a negative three, and a positive plus three, I think. And then, okay. but the pu the plus for damage keeps going up, but the the Power. negative to attack stays the same. At negative three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, Andy, your turn. What would you like to do? <clears throat> you guys know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up and sneak attack this mummy. Uh, okay. Uh, are you going to just do like a, the, the running claw thing? Or are you, oh, you're going to jump. Oh, you're going over there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not going to beat up that mummy. I'm just going to let it suffer in that pit for a while. And Brian, yeah. to answer, to answer, the, to answer the rules question, it's when your base mm -hmm. attack bo re bonus reaches plus four, and then every four points thereafter, um, the the penalty increases by minus one. The damage increases by plus two. It starts at a minus one plus two. Okay. Yeah. So I th I thought it was a minus one plus two. And it, what? How is it? Every other level it goes up. Uh, like? ev every four base attack bonus increases. Ah. Uh, okay. And your base attack bonus is plus... It's plus twelve right now. Because you're mm -hmm. on level twelve. Yeah. So it would be uh, so negative three plus six. Plus six. Yeah. That's how that works. Got it. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, a critical miss. Uh, that's always a miss. So. Actually, yeah. it should be one more, because it should have went up to two minus or minus two plus four at four, minus three plus six at eight, and then twelve. It should have gone up again. Oh, I'll have to read it, but yeah. Me, um, it starts at one night minus two, and then it increases at four, and every four after. Okay. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I Joe, uh, I didn't mean to take over this round. No, I mean it was a critical miss, so there's not much I can do. Okay. Uh, every four points thereafter. So yeah, at, at, at 5, and then 9, and then no. 13. And the first one's at 4, and f every 4 points after. So 1, so 4, four. One, 4, 8, and 12. Right, okay. Cool. Alright, uh, Andy misses. Uh, would you like to do anything else? No, no, no. I can't. No, no, I can't do anything else. Okay. Jack, your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to hit my order of justice. All right, is that a uh, swift action or whatever? Uh, the using a smite is. Okay. I would assume it's the same thing. Um, then everybody else is able to use my smite uh, next turn. Crazy. Awesome. Yeah, that our justice is uh, pretty crazy. Those paladin auras are, yeah, pretty nasty. And then uh, I'll go ahead and hit it in the face. Cool. Give it the old... What for to the face? Ah. With the water withering. <laughs> it's the same thing as this for the bonuses for hit. All right. So. Actually, they're, they're all minus one. So it's 19, 26, and. You should have a plus two for flanking, though, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so with the second hit. Uh, the, the first, your first hit is a miss. Uh, your first attack. Well, well, I don't do any damage. You don't do any damage. No, I using the rod of withering. Using the rod of withering. Okay. Uh, it's a plus one. It's a plus one light mace. But it does no damage. It does no damage. It does strength. Oh. And, um, it does what strength and uh, constitution. It do? does one d four strength and one d four con. And I swear to God, fuck this whole thing up. Oh, that's. Wait, did I do it in a different spot? I think so. Uh, you need to roll your 1d4s. These just yeah. roll damage. Scroll, you bastard. So as undead, you would know that this thing doesn't have a constitution, so um, it doesn't really suffer any constitution damage, but it can take strength damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, you hit it with a... Uh, uh yeah. Well the uh the, the only your second attack uh, connected, so. Okay. Oh, and she gets to make a uh, the thing gets to make a fort save, right? Um, uh, against uh, the yeah. seventeen. Yep. That actually saves. Fuck. So. It may not be a thing I use for very long. All right, would you like to do anything else? Uh, nope, that's me. All right, Veda, back to you. Hmm. Uh, I guess these mummies, uh, the mummy in the pit's going to take damage from being in a pit. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, which is in a, just a D4, 46, whatever. And oh, long, great. And how long is that? Uh... <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be 10 rounds. Okay, so... This will be that I'll was the track. it was the end of the the first round so the second round has begun. All right, give me a second. I thought for sure Andoria and Jack were gonna kill this thing, um, <laughs> so I had I had a different uh, outcome for this. Um, oh. Um, we 
play until 10.30, so we'll be off here in about 20, 25 minutes. What? Uh, it's on fire, right? Um, yeah. How? Yeah, I can't really do that. Okay, never mind. All right, no big deal. I'm going to catch um, Flaming Sphere. Okay. And I'm going to cast it right next to... Uh, right next to the mummy that everybody's been working on. Okay, I'm just testing that. Yeah. Ooh. Burn it. So it's a five foot sphere, like right here. Uh, ooh. Um. No, I want it towards the feet more if I can, because I'm going to use my move action to move it. Okay, you should be able to move it. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, let me read it. Uh, and that'll do 3d6 points of damage, of fire damage. Okay, it doesn't get to make a reflex save? Yeah, and reflex save. Okay, uh, I guess a DC 17. Uh-huh. <laughs> he makes the save. So. Dang! Dang, dog. Um. Okay, well, you know, I had a plan, and the plan was going to work, but it's not dead, so I'm just going to leave it there. Right oh, yeah, do I get to use a smite? Yeah, you get to pick one person to smite. Oh, I'm going to smite the guy in the pit. So, yeah. how does that work now? Uh, he I gets, thought he gets my damage bonus on uh, on the attacks. Okay, well, you I last should... for one minute. He Are you physically he, attacking him? He's not him, doing or? any damage, so. No, but but he has to smite it this round. Then it lasts for a minute. Oh. But if he doesn't use it yep. this round, it goes away. Which I guess you would know. So you're smiting the the guy in the pit. I'm smiting Doctor Pit. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Would you like to do anything else? Um, yes, actually. I'm going to move over here. That'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, it is the mummy's turn. Uh, the mummy's going to make a full-on out attack. Um, so the mummy doesn't take damage until Neville, Neville's turn, the burning damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, probably one of them. It, it just doesn't really matter when. So on a one, he's gonna attack Jack. On a two, Andy. Three, go. He's going to attack Jack. Uh, he's going all out uh, with some unarmed strikes. Uh, a two is not enough to hit against a 26 AC, I believe. Uh, a 16 does hit. Oh, what's the fort save for? Uh, don't I have to make a fort save whenever they hit me? Uh, no, this is a, not a slam attack. These are just unarmed strikes. Oh, okay. Uh, third attack does hit. Fourth attack does not. Uh, first uh, attack does... Uh, 26 damage. Okay. And the second hit does 24 damage. Uh uh uh. Hated it. All right. All right. Uh, Jack's concerned. The uh, the other mummy is gonna try to climb out. Doesn't. Uh, Neville, it's your turn. Oh yeah. So the bum, the mummy, uh, pretty much burns down from the the ongoing uh. You know, flame damage from his uh, his bombs. Oh, neat. 
And how many more bombs does Neville have? I, I thought he had used a lot uh, in the last few encounters, uh, including the one with the um, the one you just had uh, last week. Uh, he had uh, the crazy uh, amounts of uh, of craziness that happened. Neville's basically a god. <laughs> he's the most powerful character amongst all of you. <laughs> yeah, he's too. He can make potions that do anything. All right, what's going on? He has two left. He has two bombs left. Yep. So he's gonna. Oh crap! Is that thing gonna burn me? No, I just read through the uh, things. They don't do that in Pathfinder. If you, um, it doesn't say if you stand adjacent to it, you take damage. It's you actually, a... it actually. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It, it says uh, it doesn't say anything about standing adjacent to it. In fact, I would have had to actually put it in the square of the mummy in order for it to take damage. It, yeah, it's written in a way that's actually makes sense as opposed to fit head. Yeah. Or shit. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna move over there and chuck a bomb down the hole. Uh, you chucking two or or one? one. Just one on the yeah, top there. I move. Okay. Uh, a nineteen does connect. Uh, yeah, you see him kind of like, you know... Now he's being crushed and is on fire. Yeah, and I don't really know how that works because like, it's in this like pit that's kind of like a worm that's like, like you know, undulating, you know? Uh, it's only 10 feet wide, so... And I guess you just kind of drop it in there. Uh, and it's 10 feet wide. Like, uh, yeah. Bombs away like a cherry bomb, you know, like down yeah, a toilet or something. And, um, you know, so... Yeah, would you like to do anything else? Nope. All right. Go. It's your turn. You're raging. Uh, um, you watched that uh, that mummy uh, in front of you melt, uh, you know, the pieces in front of you. Uh, uh, what would you like to do? He is going to uh, carefully walk over here. He's going to smite the zombie. Okay. And then he is going to hold his action in case the zombie gets out. And he's going to continue to do that until the zombie dies or the hole disappears. Okay. Andy. You're on mute, Andy. All right, I need to figure out a toggle for my mute. This shit sucks. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to basically do the same thing. Do I have a smite? Yeah, everybody has one this round. All right, I'm going to smite the zombie and watch it um, <clears throat> wither and writhe. Okay. Jack. Uh, Jack's going to fucking heal with us. Good idea. Yeah, that mummy, if he connected with a couple more of those heads, probably shredded you up. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, 26 AC isn't as good as it used to be. It's... Uh... Well, no, no. At this point, I'm mostly relying on the fact that I can heal myself for 30, 40 points every turn and take full attacks. Yeah. But with that, though, <laughs> I, I, I still don't think you're going to be able to out-heal a lot of uh, monsters that are all out attacking you. So, but, um, but well, anyway. I'm not trying to, to just out-heal them. Mm -hmm. um, you're just trying to stay alive. <laughs> Uh, so, actually, and then I'm going to take my standard action to do it again. Okay. Uh, and that'll be, and then I guess I'll move over. So what does he do when he, like, lays in, on hands on himself? He's just, like... I figure I just touch my chest, or, like, yeah, my hand or something. It's like a Madonna move, you know, like a evoke. Okay, cool. Does he make like a sound, or does he like make a face, or does he describe it? Just describe his demeanor <laughs> when he does it. He runs his hair. He runs his hands through his cool hair, and it's like. <laughs> All right. If he weren't so civilized, he might touch somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Veda, your turn. Um. I don't think I can move this without using my move action here. Uh, 
Um, no, I'm going to come over to the edge here. Okay. And I'm going to try to disintegrate this guy. Okay. Well, so is that a range touch deck? That's a range touch, and um, it's 16 plus Jack's bonus because it's smited. Yeah, I don't know if I couldn't. Uh, I would be able to. Uh, uh, I think I could over. Uh, look. Mouth needs to work. I think I could out heal quite a bit doing that. I just healed like eighty fucking points. Yeah, I'm that's over, a lot. I'm over my max right now. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. I stand corrected. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you kind of just see, um, you know, a green uh, beam. You know, like shoot at the uh, at the mummy, and you know, you just kind of see it kind of. Crumple like uh, it was hit with a welding torch, just like. You also get another twenty-four damage on that. Uh, <laughs> Great. I don't know. Does, uh, does do smites work on spell damage? It's just damage, I believe. Um. Yeah. I don't know if you have to, if it's on an attack or successful like. attack. Um. I don't know. Uh, we'll get into it later. It doesn't really matter. Without the damage, uh, it, it's still, you know, you see it just totally, you know. Uh, it make disintegrated. It, uh, yeah. Oh, right. It gets a fort. Uh, I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, what's the DC in the fort save? 21. 21. He does make this the fort save. Damn you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so adds yeah. paladin level to all damage rolls made against the target. It doesn't say any specific type. Alright. All damage. Okay, so it's another. What is it again? Another what? It's my level times two if they're undead. Another twenty. So it's uh, 37, 37 damage. Okay. That does not. Uh... And it takes an additional four d six from. Uh... From being in the pit. Oh yeah, I was gonna do that. Yeah, you can just do it right now. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. Finally, a good roll. Hmm. All right, Mummy Struan is gonna try to climb out. Um. Uh. Oop. Uh, Neville. Neville will just burn it. Blast bomb. All right, a thirteen does connect. And oh wait, uh, oh is that enough? So I am gonna re reapply the X on there. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, I used him kind of, you know, a light to fire, and he kind of like, you know, burns it, burns to the ground inside the pit. Okay, I'm gonna um, take a standard action to put my uh, my sphere of uh, flaming sphere out. Okay, so nobody walks into it on accidenty. All right. Cool. Let's wrap this up and call it a night. Effective pit, finally. Right? Yeah. Did you take the thing that lets you dismiss those? No. Mm. I, I did. I was going to. I Well, I was going to, but some. There were two people that needed to have some kind of magic armor made. So they convinced ah. me to make magic armor instead. So. That makes sense. I mean, with the hungering pit, it's not as big a deal because we don't have to go down into the pit. We can just wait till it's, it's done. Right, yeah. Gobble still looks at Vayne and says, I hate those pits. <laughs> what does he say? Yeah, you completely come <laughs> out. I, I hate those pits. Oh. All right, everybody makes 2,500 yeah. experience. Uh, take out the mummies. Forty-five hundred, you say? Uh, twenty-five hundred. Oh, twenty-five hundred. And so twenty. Uh, that was uh, eight thousand XP since the last time we played. Yeah. Get eight thousand. Um. And okay, what you guys? What would you guys like to do? I want to check out these. Uh, whatever they are, the sarcophagi. Or... Yeah. Okay. See what's in them. 
Uh, right. Uh, so the so there are no traps. Uh, these the four smaller coffins contain remains of uh, what looked like to be priests uh, wearing uh, rotting red robes. Uh, uh, they're wearing uh, bejeweled phylacteries, uh, which uh, appear to be made of gold. Uh, they're also uh, wearing gold earrings uh, and gold rings, uh, which appear to have the mud sorcerer symbols on them. Um, cool. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up group gold here. And I would like to detect magic on everything. There you go. And so let's go ahead. Um, I, all I had time to do was write down bejeweled jewelry. Uh, so the only thing that's magical, uh, in each of the uh, the corpse's mouths, uh, is the, the, the mouth is clutching um, a semi uh, a semi precious inscribed stone. Uh, one appears to be a bloodstone. One appears to be a carnelian. Uh, one's a citrine, and one's an onyx each bearing uh, one of the four uh, mud sorcerer symbols, and they uh, irradiate uh, a faint abjuration magic. Okay. Uh, um, I got the, Bloodstone, Citrine, Onyx. I missed the second one. Uh, Carnelian. Oh, Carnelian. Okay. There you go. And so... Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, do a spellcraft track to try to identify those. I'll take uh, I'll take ten if everybody's okay with it on uh, the four of them for a thirty-two on each. Um, yeah, you're not sure if they actually have a magical effect. Um, they're definitely a magic item, but they don't. You know, they don't. Have they a have a purpose that's not clearly identified. Right. And then you notice, okay, so the um, there's four phylacteries uh, made of gold. Each each one's worth about 1,200 gold pieces. Uh, the pairs of gold earrings are worth 200 each. How, how much were the gold phylacteries worth? Uh, 1,200. 1,200. Nice. And finally, uh, the gold rings, uh, each have, having the mud sorcerer symbols, uh, are 40 gold each. So there's four of them. For forty gold each, they're each wielding a. Uh, I'm sorry, piece. you were breaking up there. I was, I was, I was breaking up. Can you go back to the rings? You were breaking apart there. Really? I'm sorry. I, okay. I did not notice. Weird. Okay. The rings were how much? I didn't. Uh, Forty. Four zero. Four zero, and there was four of them. Yes. Okay. And there was, you said there was a mace. There's maces. Yeah, uh, they are wielding maces. Uh, they're not magical, uh, and they're definitely they're bronze. Uh, they're definitely green uh, with age. Uh, they don't look like they have any kind of value. Hey, we'll put them in a bag anyway. And finally, uh, as you check out the uh, the hill mummies uh, that you had, uh, there's an inscription inside uh, the mummies wrappings. Uh, here. This is written in Talese. Um, colored stones to thee bequeath, bitten tight in priestly teeth, each a key to Zolo's wall, sign to sign will make it fall. Mm -hmm. cool. Hold on, hold on. All right, gents, that is it. Okay. You guys want to call it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we kind of went late last time anyway, so um, so cool. All right, uh, there'll be more next week, I think. Right? right. Is there anything going on? We're we're not canceling for any reason, are we? 
Uh, I've no, never eaten it. Okay. Fair enough. All right, guys. Good night, gentlemen. Hey, later. All right. Good night, Can you... guys. Can. Wait, what? What's up? Does it... Can anybody tell me there was the flak trees, the rings, the maces? What are the other four items? Oh, they're in the. They are in the group gold. Um, there was um, the four stones: bloodstone, carnelian, citrine, yeah. onyx, uh, the phylactery. That was there was four of those. There was two earrings and four rings. Two earrings. Uh, and there were bronze maces. That, uh, there were four. Yeah, sets of had... Sorry. Oh, there were four. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah, I heard you say four pairs. Yeah, four uh, pairs of earrings. Were... And then there right. was the rings. And the earrings were worth four hundred each, right? Two hundred. Yeah. 200. Not 200, each. sorry. 200 each. Okay. Okay, that, I got it. Then. I just like to keep awesome. all of this all stuff. Alright, good night, boys. Alright, be cool. And chat. Good night, guys. Good night. And thanks everybody for helping me out uh, this weekend. I do really No problem. Anytime. This is the last time I'm moving, do you, moving uh, you in this house, though. Ben, You're not allowed to move. <laughs> ben do you have 156.307? Um, that sounded like what I have. I have 156, 307. Sweet. All right, oh, uh, Josh, I do need to talk to you about, um, about the other thing. Good night, Brian. Good night. Uh, All right. All right. Good night, dudes. The, uh, there is a spell. Let me get it for you. Um... Here it is. I only have a second to talk about it, but I just need to tell you uh, for the other game. Uh, it's a floating disc. It's a first level spell. It can hold up to 100 pounds of whatever, and you can direct it um, as you as you want. If it does, if you don't direct it, it just follows you within five feet of you. Um, but my guy's only three foot one, and he weighs like 47 pounds. Can I sit on the disc and direct it? I'll have to look at it. Yeah, that's why I put it in chat. I thought it was going to be like I, a. I actually don't see it know. in chat. See what? Oh, there it is. That's really weird. Okay, if you expand the bubble where you can input, it actually doesn't allow you to see what's at the bottom of chat. Oh wow! I've never done that. Uh, wow, that's very sensitive too, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there we go. I got it. All right. I got to go pee. I'll talk to you later. Take Bye. a look. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoyed.